Did you ever have tests that never failed when they actually should have failed? And trust me, you're not the only one. Everybody, including me, does make mistakes from time to time. Either a misspelling or other issues that cause the test never to fail. Now, one important thing about testing is making sure that your tests actually can fail when they should fail. Hi there, this is Valentine and in this tutorial I wanted to show you a technique that can help you test your assertions in Postman when doing API testing. So let's get started with a very simple API. I am using httpbin.org which is a service which allows you to inspect very easily what you're sending. And in my case, I'm simply sending a parameter called foo with a value bar. And what I get back is the arguments that I have sent, so foo and bar as the value, additionally the headers that we have sent, and so on. So it's a very simple API that always reflects back what we are sending. And for this specific API, I have created some tests which are pretty similar to what you would have in a normal situation. So in this case, I wanted to check if the arguments that I have sent, so for example, I knew that I have sent foo, actually has the value bar. And this is a test that is asserting this thing. Additionally, I'm doing a check on the user agent to check that this is Postman runtime in a specific version. And finally, I'm doing a schema validation. So I have defined here a schema, and based on the response body, I can then validate the schema and see if it works. And if I'm sending this request and I'm inspecting the test results, everything looks good. Now, one important thing when doing tests and especially when doing API testing is to make sure that your tests actually fail when they should fail. Because if the tests don't fail, if something changes in the API, then there's absolutely no value in the test that you have written because they will not give an alarm that something has changed and this will be like a silent fail. And this is definitely something we do not want. Now, there are multiple approaches on how you can do that, but I wanted to show you an approach which involves mock servers. So what I'm going to do is to define a mock server and then on the mock server, I'll be able to change the response that I'm getting back. And based on that, I can then see what's going on. So what I will do is I will create a mock server. I'm gonna call it break API. And I'm gonna click create mock server. And that's about it. I have here the address of the mock server. And what I will do is I'll create a new environment. And I'll simply change the address that I have for the URL. So instead of using the real server, I will have here in this environment, the mock server that was created by Postman. Additionally, what I will do is to add an example. So when I'm going here to add example, this will be automatically populated with the response that I have. And just to make sure that this is something that we are returning, I'm gonna add here an additional field. Which says mock is true. Okay, now what we need to do is to select the right environment. So instead of the live environment, I'm gonna select mock. And this will make this environment variable change to the mock server. So when I'm sending this request, I will still see that all my tests are passing. And this is something that we definitely expect. And I will see that this response now has been mocked, which, which means that we now have control over the response. And now let's try test by test to make this fail. 
And we're gonna start first by changing the argument. So let's see how our tests react if we actually change the arguments that we have. So I'm gonna revisit the examples. So let's write here instead of foo, I'm gonna write bar. Instead of bar, I would write foo. I'm gonna save it, go back to the request. And now you will see that one of the tests have failed. This is the kind of the assertion error that you will get. Um, you expect it undefined to deeply equal bar, undefined because this property doesn't exist anymore. I can then completely change the arc so that the arcs are no longer available, so to speak, in the response body. This, of course, will give another different error to this entire thing. You cannot read property full of undefined. So there's different errors that you can get. Definitely you can improve your own taste based on this. But at least at this level, this looks right because the test is failing. So it means that the test is properly working and it's testing what it should test. Now let's start with the next thing that we wanted to change and test if it works is user agent. So I'm gonna change the user agent, for example, by removing runtime to see if it works. I'm gonna save it. And now going back to the test results. I can see that now the test user agent has failed. You will see the exact error that's happening here and you'll understand what's going on. Okay, that's so far so good. So finally, we have here a JSON schema validation. And I've defined a schema which assumes that the response is an object and that it has two properties, um, arcs and headers, and that corresponds with what we have here in the response body, arcs and headers. We don't care about the rest of them. And now let's see if the schema validation will also fail. So what we need to do is to change either of these here. So either arcs or headers, let's write instead of headers, just header and save it. And you'll see here that we have a test that failed, uh, which is saying cannot read property user age of undefined. But actually the schema validation didn't work. So the schema is still passing. And this definitely shouldn't have happened. And trust me, when it comes to schema validation, this is something that really happens a lot. And generally schema testing is very, very hard because not always you have the opportunity of changing the response that you're getting back from the server. So in this case, we have now identified a problem with our schema. Actually, the problem that appears here is the way I have misspelled properties. And if I change that, it will then work. But this just goes to show how easily you can write some tests that never fail. And if it wasn't for this other test checking this particular property and you would only rely on the schema, you would expect that everything will work just fine as before. Thank you for watching and hopefully you have learned something valuable from this tutorial. If this was the case, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this. And if you have any questions or any problems, make sure you leave a comment in the section below. I'll be more than happy to help you. See you at the next tutorial. Bye bye.